John Nash with SantaClaraBroncos.com here, joined by Mike Pereira, former NFL referee, former vice president of officiating in the National Football League. As a lot, a lot of formers, aren't I? Huh? Yeah, but uh, current analyst <laughs> at uh, Fox Sports, the rules analyst on NFL Sundays, and uh, Mike back on campus today. Of course, the former Santa Clara graduate, 1972, with uh, BBF director Rusty Weeks, and uh, back on campus today for a talk with the Commonwealth Club. And uh, campus looked a little bit different from when you were here? I'll tell you what, I didn't know how to get here. I mean, when I turned, I, I just came up 17 and then I took the Alameda to come in here. Hey, when I was last year, the, uh, Alameda, Alameda went right through the middle of campus. What's this big jog around here? What's that baseball field over there? It's, it's beautiful what they've done with the campus here. I always thought it was an absolutely gorgeous campus. Um, and, and as I said today, you know, when the Alameda went right through the center of campus, you had to walk from the student center to the library, a, a stroll I never made very often. But, but you know, since they've made these improvements, it is lovely here. It's, it's, uh, it's even prettier than I thought. Yeah, always something going on here at Santa Clara in terms of construction. The baseball field, uh, where you played uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, now completely different, no longer over at Buckshaw. Stephen right. shot the new baseball field. Right. But, of course, you were a baseball guy, but somehow you got into football officiating. How did you make that transition? You know, it's very interesting. I never played a down of football in my life. And, and to think that I ended up with the number one job in the country in terms of officiating in football is, uh, is pretty incredible. Um, you know, but my dad was an official, and so I kind of learned the game of football through his eyes a little bit. And so when this opportunity came up, when I actually went to school here at Santa Clara my, in my junior year in 71, when I decided to go referee Pop Warner games to make a little extra cash, uh, you know, um, it was it was a fairly easy transition. And I found out, and maybe because of looking at through my dad's eyes, I loved it. I mean, it was it was such a rush for me to get involved in officiating, and really it's been a huge part of my life ever since. When you say, uh, you know, officiating's fun, it was appealing to you, but why was it appealing to you? From my perspective, you know, I see the officiating, the officials, and they're always in the doghouse. Either you got a coach running, uh, running his mouth at you, or the opposing fans are saying, hey, we lost this game because the official blew a call. But what was it appealing about it that, I mean, you said uh, the adrenaline rush was something, but, I mean, there's got to be something more to keep you going back out there. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, it's one of those things where you really can't explain, but it just, it gets into your blood. I, I, it probably was, you know, just being in an athletic contest where you were trying to make sure that the game was being played fairly and no team was getting an advantage by breaking rules. And then being around kids. Now, when I first started, obviously, you know, you're talking about small kids who were running around and you had parents that were chasing you, you know, out of the little, off the fields at the end of the day. But, you, you know... And I don't know, it was just it was it was amazing to me. It really it gave me a feeling of uniqueness, you know, and it, it's like it set me apart from others in in a way that I really enjoyed. And and you know, um, there's an amazing turnover in officiating and it's hard to recruit new officials because they succumb to the abuse and, and it happens in the first two years, you know, in, in because you can only get yelled at so much and if you can't tolerate it, um, then you'll leave. If you get past the two years, you're done. I mean, it rolls off of you, and you and you almost become to the point where you don't even realize it's happened and, and or it's happening, and 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 that's where you get too quickly. And I think that's why I ended up enjoying it for so long. Well, in uh, part of your talk today, you talked about the officials' job and as well as the league's job in the NFL of protecting players and making sure uh, safety's first. Um, what? What do you think needs to be done across other sports um, in order to make sure that all athletes are, you know, getting their proper uh, safety as well as um, being healthy out there on the field? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously now in in so many sports now you're looking at the head. I mean, you know, for a long time it was the legs, and 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 you look even at football. You know, it's been more and more rules against blocking below the waist because you were concerned about blowing out knees and those types of things, and now. Now it's gone up to the head because what we were finding is, or what the league found out was, that the concussions were having these long-term ramifications, and that, you know, as was mentioned today, the average lifespan of a player that played in the NFL for five years is like 20 years less than the normal male lifespan. So you, you, everybody's got to take a look, and I think everybody. You made the point. Other sports too. They have to take a look at how the head is involved in the game, 
and you look at the NFL, they're making rules now and have been making rules to try to, at least against players who are deemed to be defenseless, keep them from getting hit in the head or neck area. Um, you know, you look at hockey. I, I, I mean, this whole thing is tough because the fights that they have and the hits in hockey are even worse than they have in the NFL, and half the time they're not wearing helmets anyways. And, and uh, you know, the whole thing, you, you get the mixed martial arts and you've got the boxing and you've got the car wrecks in, in NASCAR. You, you know, everybody's got to take a look at the injury aspect of sports, period, and, and make sure they're doing everything they can to try to – you can't stop it. You know, you can't you – can, you're not – you're never going to have, especially in football, a game free of injuries. But you got to do what you can to limit them, and especially when it comes to the head area. Yeah, definitely agree with that. One last thing, something that stood out to me today in your talk with, you said you were talking to the students, but it was about following your passion and doing something that you really felt strong about. Can you elaborate on that for some of our viewers that didn't get an opportunity to see the talk today? Yeah, you know, uh, we, we really, we really kind of live a relatively short lifespan. Um, you know, and we spend a tremendous amount of hours working. I mean, it is the, it's the nature of our existence. We have to work to uh, survive. Um, I, I see so many people, though, that sometimes that sacrifice their passion, you know, and they go in directions that, that really they're not interested in, and a job really becomes a job. And, and I know that that's necessary, and I also know that, you know, that I was very fortunate in that I somehow caught this bug, you know, called officiating. And... And for whatever reason, uh, you know, I, it remained a bug for me as I, as I kept rising in the officiating levels. And then, you know, and then in, 19, in 1996, when I was 46 years old, I got the opportunity to go in the NFL and then to work in the NFL office running the program. That was my passion. And, and, uh, and although it didn't come till 46 years old, I mean, I, I worked for 12 years in New York where there really wasn't a day that I didn't wake up and I was ready to go to the office because I was going to do what I loved. I mean, I, every job has parts of it you don't like, but still, it was my passion. That's why I always say that, you know, find a passion. Find something that makes you feel good and and see if you can get your life to revolve around that. And you got to be patient because it won't come the very first day. But, you know, if you're patient and if you kind of work toward it, if you can, live your passion because it's a marvelous thing. Yeah, definitely a great lesson. I think that all our viewers as well as uh, the students here at Santa Clara can really take to heart. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. My pleasure. For SantaClaraBroncos.com, I'm John Nash.